So you've got yourself a bamboo printer and now the question is what else do you need? Is there anything you should buy right from the beginning or can you just buy some stuff after? For your convenience we have all the links below in the description so you just a click away. The first thing that you definitely need to have is you're gonna need more nozzles, more hot ends because on the Bamboo Lab printers, the hot ends and the nozzle are one. So um, there is several different kinds of nozzles you can have. Um, there is different sizes, which uh, the regular standard nozzle is a 0.4 size, but you can get the 0.6 and you can get a 0.8 nozzle as well as a 0.2. Now the 0.2 is obviously a smaller nozzle, which means it's gonna be um, very, very accurate and gets more details out. But then on the other hand, the possibility of the nozzle clogging is bigger too. So uh, the 0 0.4 is the one that is included and then the 0 0.6 is actually my preferred nozzle because you can still get some nice details out but it's faster to print and the prints are stronger because the layer lines are thicker. And then there is a 0 0.8, so if you have something really big, you might see the layer lines better with the 0 0.8, um, but it is stronger and it is faster to print. Especially if you want to use the higher speeds on the bamboo printers, like the sports mode or the ludicrous mode, you want to use a, a bigger nozzle, because the 0 0.4 nozzle might just not have enough flow. The other thing you can choose is you can choose if you want to have it including the fan, and the cables like this or if you just want to have the nozzle itself like this obviously there's a price difference um, I would ex uh, recommend to have one spare nozzle in whatever size you use most mm -hmm. like 0 0.4 um, if you use 0 0.4 most or 0 0.6 if you use 0 0.6 most and then I would use one uh, with fan of each size existing so if you want to change you don't have to deal with taking the whole thing apart you can just take it out put the new one in and you're done the next thing that makes sense to get is a spare extruder um, obviously it's a mechanical part mechanical parts only last that long and if the extruder breaks down you're not gonna print anymore it's good if you have one on hand especially if you don't want to have downtime on your printer only takes a couple of minutes to swap this one out and that way you can keep on printing while you're fixing the other extruder the next thing i will get right from the beginning is the ceramic heater for hot end you can get those directly on the bamboo website in a set of three those are parts that is not a matter if they break, they are going to break after some time because they are constantly under a lot of heat. Also, I would recommend to get um, the thermistor for the hot end. The thermistor is what actually gets the temperature out of the nozzle or of the hot end. So it finds out what is the temperature on the hot end and compares it with what the temperature should be in the software. Um, not a matter, again, if it's going to break, especially because this is a very, very thin, skinny cable and it's not going to last forever. You want to have one spare, otherwise, you know, this one breaks, uh, you're not able to print for uh, until you get the new one in. Then there is this little thing here. It's where the nozzle wipes off the old filament and that one will break. It will break it just a matter when so keep some spares of these as well as some of the cutting blades like this one it's just a little blade it will get dull after 3,000 times cutting the filament it's not a matter if it's a matter when and then there is one more thing that if you're on the bamboo website anyway you want to get it those are the silicon socks those go over the hot end and um, believe me, they're breaking. I had already three breaking on me. They come in a pack of three. Definitely, you gotta have some of those ready. What most people forget is um, the PTFE tubing. 
is also a consumable. They are not holding forever. They are wearing out because the filament is going through and then you will have to replace it after some time. And if you go to the bamboo website and buy it, you have to cut it and you should get one of those cutters because it's very important whenever you cut this tube that it's very, very straight. You're also gonna need some tools. I really like this little spatula. It helps to take off the print from the print plate and it also helps a lot when you have to remove some of the support material. The same thing is for the needle pliers here and the side cutter. These two, you're gonna need those. This to just cut the filament off and then these really help with taking the supports off. Great tools. And then you might want to get some scrapers like these two. I love the smaller ones best because you have direct control to it and it's very very easy to get some residue off the build plate that might just be stuck on there. And then for cleaning the build plate I'm using isopropyl alcohol. It's 99% and it's perfect for cleaning the build plate. And to wipe it, this is my absolute favorite paper towel holder. What I love on this is you can use one hand and it tears off very, very easy. So if you have in one hand your alcohol, the other hand can still tear it off. It's great. There's two more things that I will get right from the beginning. One is the super loop. I have another video about that and I'm gonna put the link um, in the description. This one is helping to loop the uh, lead screw. And then the other thing is a flashlight for your head. Works amazing and really helps, especially if you have to change the hot ends on your printer. Now let's talk a little bit about the different build plates. Originally when I bought the printer, there was only a cold build plate included with the printer. And on the back side, the engineering plate. Now the cold plate I use for everything, PLA, PETG, um, ASA, everything, and it did work. However, it was not perfect. Sometimes the adhesion was okay, sometimes it was not. Uh, I had to take the glue and it's always a little bit messy and you can see there is always some residue with that glue and you, you cannot put it in the dishwasher, but you can clean it by hand with some soap and water. And that's the easiest way to get the glue off. If you want to use the cold plate, the easiest way is to use the glue stick, put some glue on there and then use a mixture of one third IPA and two third water sprayed on there. Take a towel, a paper towel and it's very very easy to spread it all over the place. The engineering plate is my favorite plate to print ASA. It is absolutely amazing how it sticks. I never had any issues and once it's cooled down it releases itself it can't get much easier than that for everything else my favorite place is a textured PEI plate this one is from bamboo lab and it's on both sides textured it works great with almost every filament and it really sticks nicely and it's easy to release now the difference between the textured surface and the regular flat surface you can see right here I printed some caps for my plant tower and these caps have a total different um, look if they are with textured than if they are flat. I really like the textured uh, looks much better but in some cases if you have a mechanical part that has to be very accurate this might be not the right thing. In that case I use this build plate here from Wham Bam. This is a PEX build plate. It's very similar to PEI. I think it's a little bit better than PEI in my personal opinion. And um, it works great with PLA. However, PETG, not so much. It really depends on which PETG and what temperature you're gonna use. But this can easily happen. If the temperature of the plate is too close with the temperature of the filament, it might stick so much that you can never get it off again. So on the back side of the Bam Bam PEX sheet um, plate, there is um, nothing really. It's just um, steel. However, you can buy just a PEX surface from Bam Bam. And you can apply this on the back side. And then if you ruin it, you can take this off 
and put the new one on. And these obviously are much cheaper. The same thing obviously also for the cold plate. There is a sticker you can use for the cold plate. And after Bam Bam came out with the PEX sheet, now Bamboo Lab also has a PEI flat sheet. It works great with any material, however, again, you gotta be careful if you use PETG. And on the back side is another engineering plate, which for ASA, again, is the best. The next thing you're gonna need is some filament. There is a lot of different brands and a lot of different types and a lot of different colors. So it might be not that easy to find exactly what you need for your purposes. You have to decide if you want to have matte, regular or silk filament and then some of them even have glitter. My favorite brand is Overture. The reason for it is number one, it has a huge selection on colors and materials. Number two, because I'm selling on Etsy, I really need to make sure that I always have the material available and the colors available and I haven't had any problems yet that any of those colors would not be available anymore. So that really helps. Yes, these are in cardboard spools, which means you have to use those adapter rings made out of plastic that you can print yourself. It's on printables, the link is below, but it's not that big of a deal and you're doing the environment a favor by using cardboard rather than plastic. You also need to remember that silk PLA is not as sturdy as regular matte PLA. So if you have something that has to have any load to hold, you want to use matte PLA or PETG, of course, or even better ASA or ABS. And this is the place where I also need to warn you. It can be very addicting to get every possible color out there. So these are the things that I think you need to buy right from the beginning. And now it's your turn. Tell us down in the description what are your favorite accessories for your Bamboo Lab printer. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe.